The group C participants are Sushi Mukherjee and Sushi Gupta. That's right. Sushi Gaby. Next we see the posterior division. One is diagrammatico temporal and one is diagrammatico facial. So any damage there can result in paresthesia over our forehead and nose. See, communication skills are very important. And I've observed the students are doing excellent, particularly just like teachers. Now for you all, we have a 3D representation. We have some questions for you. These are for asking questions. This question. Welcome to the student seminar of Malda Medical College. Let me start by saying a few words about it. Interested students are assigned particular topics from their syllabus to prepare a presentation themselves. The diagrammatic nerves further divides into two branches. After which the demonstration takes place in front of the entire batch, respected professors and the faculty of the concerned department. One is diagrammatico temporal and one is diagrammatico facial. This video is going to be relevant particularly for the first year MBBS students because the talk is designed to bring out confidence and eloquence among the budding medicos. As we see here, mandibular nerve, first part we see that it's the trunk of the mandibular nerve. From the trunk we get two branches, nervous spinosus and nerve to the medial pterygoid muscle. Nerve to the medial pterygoid muscle further divides into two gifts um, Sensation to the tensor tympani, tensor veli palatini, and medial pedicle. Next, we see the anterior division. Anterior division branches further into deep temporal, lateral pedicle, nerve to lateral pedicle, mesenteric branch, and the sensory branch that is the buccal branch. So now let's describe the chief sensory nucleus. The location of chief sensory nucleus is. Posterior part of the pons lateral to the motor nucleus and it is continuous below with the spinal nucleus. Moving on to the next slide, the last sensory nucleus that is the mesencephalic nucleus. It is located in the central grey matter of midbrain on each side of the cerebral aqueduct. It then extends inferiorly into the pons till chief sensory nucleus. You can see on the board the upper one is the mesencephalic nucleus in yellow. And coming with its function, it contains the cell bodies of pseudo unipolar first neurons. So, it is a major characteristic of mesencephalic nucleus. Next slide. Nerve to the minor hyoid, which runs superficial, superficial to the minor hyoid and then enters the anterior belly of digestion. Like, let us assume that this is the ophthalmic nerve. So, it is in the middle cranial fossa. <coughs> now, it ascends, uh, it goes forward and passes through the superior orbital fissure as you all know and it exits out in the orbit. Now over to the next slide. The idea of having the student seminar is to reverse the roles. The student becomes a teacher and, then, and we learn. This is the way in which you can master the subject. You can clarify your doubts and also share your ideas. Talking is going to be repeated every time. Now uh, I need a hybrid presentation. Because you are in the students present here, so beside the audiovisual, there should be some show of that talk. It has got four nucleus. That is three sensory and one motor. These all four nucleus together they merge in tri at trigeminal ganglion and gives off three branches, which are B1, B2, and B3. Of the ganglionic nerve, ganglionic and ganglionic nerve, ganglionic part now comes to the pre-ganglionic part. In this side, these three nerves compositely form a sensory root, which comes to the anterior portion of the pons. This one is the pons. Now, this is sensory root. The sensory root has now we come to the course and division of the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve. This nerve is attached to the ventral surface of the pons at its junction with the middle cerebellar pedicle. 
as you can correlate in the diagram here. It arises by two routes, smaller medial motor route and larger lateral sensory route. So here is the smaller medial motor route and this is the larger lateral sensory route. Sensory loop passing forward and laterally lodges in an impression above the apex of pectus temporal at the floor of the middle cranial fossa. Here it exhibits the round enlarged trigeminal ganglion, which further gives rise to three large divisions of trigeminal nerve. We see the trigeminal ganglion, the ophthalmic nerve, the first division of trigeminal nerve, maxillary nerve, that is the second division of trigeminal nerve, the motor root the tympanic membrane to which third part, uh, third division of trigeminal nerve supplies, anterior division of mandibular nerve, nerve to tensor villi palatini that comes from the trunk of the mandibular nerve, the otic ganglion, the corner tympani, auricular temporal nerve that, is, that comes from the posterior division, tensor tympani muscle to which the trunk of the mandibular nerve supplies, lesser petrosal nerve, now, for you all, we have a 3D representation of the ophthalmic nerve with its branches. Please try to follow. This is the ophthalmic nerve shown here, and in the orbit, it has multiple sensory locations. The first one here is the frontal branch, the lacrimal. So, of all the branches mentioned here, there is just one long, uh, there's just one nerve or the one branch that enters the eyeball which is the long ciliary branch here shown. The long ciliary branch has, is the only nerve that enters amongst the branches and it sends some sense, uh, it has some sympathetic fibers that goes to the pup dilated pupillary muscle in the iris. Apart from that we have one more nerve which is the short ciliary nerve shown here this one and this short ciliary nerve is coming from the ciliary ganglion. This short ciliary nerve along with long ciliary nerve enters the eyeball and supplies it. Now we talk about the clinical anatomy related with parasympathetic ganglion of the face. So from this picture uh, there is a cartoon you can see uh, there is uh, the central nervous system. Uh, from this uh, there is this is trigeminal ganglion which holds three positions in the face. This is the uh, trigeminal uh, divisions of the P1, I1, I2, and I3. This is the ophthalmic division, uh, this is the maxillary division, and this is the mandibular division. Uh, if there is any injury to the ophthalmic nerve, then what happens? There is a loss of Corneal blink reflex. If any irritant goes in our cornea, then we blink our eye. If for any reason the ophthalmic nerve is damaged, then it is written, hence a lesion at its pathway would cause the loss of the same reflex. So if any damage happens to the ophthalmic nerve, we will lose our corneal blink reflex. Moving on to the next slide, last but not the least, trigeminal neuralgia. I would request my partner to explain. So the last topic of our presentation today, the trigeminal neuralgia. It is uh, yet again uh, an issue in the trigeminal nerve caused by an issue in the trigeminal nerve. It is characterized by paroxysmal. Now what is paroxysmal? I'd like to explain. It's an increase or record fits. It means that the attacks are increasing or recurring constantly or continuously. So it's characterized by paroxysmal attacks of excruciating facial pain of sudden onset. So it will be like a sudden uh, attack and of very short duration. It is often initiated by touching a trigger area. It occurs in the area of cutaneous distribution of one or more branches of the trigeminal nerve, usually the V2 and V3. The unremitting pain is so severe that the patient may be driven to commit suicide. Because although it's of very short duration, but the pain is of such an intense and immense pain that the patient is driven also uh, to a mental extent to suicide. Its management includes thermocoagulation of the roots of the trigeminal nerves. The trigeminal root section, that is the division of the trigeminal roots. Relief of the vascular compression, for example, if the trigeminal nerve is compressed by any blood vessel, then of course if that blood vessel is re if the vascular compression is relieved, then it might be a management or a solution. And uh, the last, cryosurgery of the <coughs> peripheral nerve. That ends our presentation today. Thank you.
So it was really nice presentation. Thank Shivaji and Sukumar for presenting this. Now you know that uh, this is really a hybrid presentation. So audio visual, some work, board work has been done, some demonstration has been done. But uh, regarding this demonstration on the board, on the lecture class of the seminars, it is very difficult. Later you can project it on this. Screen because it is very small for us. So for other for us, you know everything. That's why you can realize only. So the topic is open for questions, but a few minutes only. The first question is: Mandibular nerve is one of the following. The first option is sensory, second is motor nerve, and third is mixed nerve. Answers from your side. Let's see the answer. Yes, it's a mixed nerve. Next question. is a branch of the trunk of mandibular nerve branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve motor branch of anterior division of mandibular nerve sensory branch of anterior division of mandibular nerve branch of anterior division motor branch of anterior division okay see see yes e is the right answer buccal nerve is the only sensory branch We move on to the next question. Before entering the mandibular foramen, inferior alveolar nerve gives a motor branch, which is nerve to the lateral pterygoid, nerve to the mylohyoid, nerve to the medial pterygoid, and nerve to submandibular branch. Answers, please. Mylohyoid. 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 Yes, that's the correct answer. Nerve to mylohyoid. Thank you. Thank you for the participation. 